We are live from Red Hills Road as we are at the Calabar High School preparing for Issa Manning Cup action. Another look at the group of death in the Manning Cup and the two teams will show their skills once again. Charles Smith High against Kingston College who are top of the zone here. Thank you so much for joining our coverage here on the Home of Champions. My name is Donald Oliver. I'm hanging out with Chris Taylor. And as the teams line up over on the far side, uh, eager to do battle, we'll hear the thoughts of my analyst for the afternoon. Uh, just want to know, what do you think about these two teams squaring off with each other in such a competitive group? Yeah, very competitive group as well. And there's been, there have been some exciting matchups over time. One that the Purples have dominated four wins out of some, what, nine games between the two teams. Just a one win for Charlie Smith in recent time, and he came back in 2012, but I guess that's not that recent. That 1-0 victory. But yeah, Charlie Smith looked a strong team this year. K Kingston College, probably not as strong as we'd have seen them last year and previous years, but they are on top of the group, of course, benefiting from three points as well, which they gained against Heidel, even though they went down four goals to nil in that match. Um, the first game of the season it was for them. And many people would have seen that result and would have said, you know, I don't think Kingston College will be going this far. Are you surprised that they are now top of the, the group? Well, I'm surprised that they are top of the group because I'm surprised that Heidel is an ineligible player. <laughs> or ineligible players, I should say, yeah. Right. So, so, yeah, from that perspective, it's a bit of a surprise. I, I didn't see Kingston College being on top of the group. I'm not necessarily sure that they will stay there, but kudos to them for, for benefiting on, on that kind of scenario. And it's something that in the last couple of seasons has been disappointing for me, Donald, that, that obviously schools not following the rules or not reading the rules enough to follow the guidelines accordingly. And really and truly, at the end of it all, it's, it's the youngsters that are suffering. They're not the ones making that decision, but they're the ones suffering at the hands of, of bad administrative decisions. Um, but yeah, that being said, KCR are here. Important match this, because as you said, this is a group of death and very difficult group to come out of with, of course, Calabar involved as well, Heidel, who we'll see later on, and no more than three teams to go through from this group, two for sure. Robert Sow, of course, would have seen him last year, a veteran in this Kingston College squad. Of course, he wears a captain's armband, uh, the one on the left, and of course, Daniel Clark, the number 10 for Charlie Smith, is uh, the skipper of uh, the team. As the officials greet each other, and they just have some last words there. Cavill Banton, of course, is the man in charge of uh, this afternoon's matchup. Yeah, Andre Smith, Jermaine Page, his assistant, and of course, Omar Hines, the fourth official. Chad Smith, and their starting lineup sees Deontay Gary in goal. Uh, Kevon Gale, Reese Clayton, Trevon Lowe, a part of the back line, Stephen Emmanuel, Michael Smith, Kevin Richards, and Jamodi Dwayne in the middle of the pack. And up top, Daniel Clark and DeAnthony uh, Stevenson on the wings, supporting their striker, Raekwon Stoney. He scored three goals so far. 3-4-3, three, three, the regular Charlie Smith formation. It will be no different today. Stoney with three goals, Pringle with two, and they look to rectify that blank that they recorded against Calabar. Malik Williams, of course, is between the sticks for Kingston College. Rajay, Rajay Ziminis, Robert Siao, O'Neill Bryan, and Kamal Patterson, the back four in the middle of the park. Dejon Green has been asked to play in the holding role for KC. Kaje Fletcher and Jaheem McLean will join him in the middle of the park. In the middle of the park. Alex Hislop on the left with four goals to his name so far. The 13-year-old Kelvin Brown, uh, who scored a wonder goal in that last televised matchup, uh, is on the right-hand side. Dejon Field, of course, is the centre forward, and uh, we're looking to see Kingston College playing some attractive football again this afternoon. Well, Brown was actually runner up his goal in terms of goal of the week 4 3 3 is what KC will play. And yeah, Hislop and Daly Daly scoring a hat trick against Penwood as well, has four goals, both of them. So we're on the way here at Calabar High. And, uh, 
just to tell those in television land that uh, what we have heard from the administrators here at Calabar is that the well has been down for the last several weeks. Hence the state of the field at the moment. I can tell you that in pre-season it was in much better condition, but they have been having some gremlins in their water system. And uh, with that being down over the last few weeks, the state of the field, which is a disappointment for all concerned, including the administrators here at Kadabar High. But uh, the thing about it is that both teams will be playing on the same surface, so really there is no excuse to be had. Now, you mentioned Gremlin. Had you ever watched that movie oh, back yeah. in the 80s? It was certainly nothing, <laughs> nothing good to look at. <laughs> so I, I like that term, yeah. And yeah, good description because it is very dry here. And yeah, we've seen it in much better condition over time. And during the summer, it was magnificent actually. Well, Early summer. So Kingston College trying to go through the gears here, trying to switch the play. Jaheim McLean, who's decided to come deep in the early parts of this match. It's a very young team. According to Vassar Reynolds, it's an average age of about 15 years as we take a look at Eugene Williams, the man in charge at, at Charlie Smith, the heart and soul of the institution. Former Manning Cup winner with Charlie Smith. Yep, captain Winning as captain. well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back in 1988. The first title it was for Charlie Smith, their first of three. 1988, 1990, and 1995. Well, here's their present captain now in Clark trying to get the ball inside. He earns the corner for his team. And there is the aforementioned Vassal Reynolds, who has been speaking positively about his team in recent weeks. The majority of the players in this squad can play in the under-16 Colts competition. Has had a big impact at all the schools he's gone to. Vassal Reynolds has been a coach in the Manning Cup as well as in the DaCosta Cup. Took Rossi's to the title in 2017. The Woolmers to the Champions Cup a couple of years before, or the year before that in 2016, I make it. And was a part of that 2012 Heidel team that went to the final under Jeffrey Maxwell. Emmanuel with a kick inside the area, trying to turn that one goal words. Couldn't quite wrap his foot around it. Jamal Lituani, and it went wide of the mark. We do hope as well that the rain stay away. Mm. Overcast conditions. And we've had some some showers in recent days, weeks here in Kingston. The field is so dry though, you wonder if, if, if the rain no, would No, it was it. obviously ignored here. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, they actually had some rain, but as far as this field is concerned, it's parched. Yeah. McLean, again picking it up deep. Charles Smith trying to go the other way, unsuccessful at the moment. Over on the far side is O'Neill Bryan providing the block for Kingston College. Ball played inside the area, looking for his captain Clark, who was waiting to crack that one on the volley. One suspects waiting in vain. Well, here is Clark again. Ambitious effort from distance on that occasion from Tevin Richards. Well, that clearance did some damage. Literally went on the ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> Do any with the throw. Charlie Smith showing a lot of intent in the first few minutes of this game, trying to turn, finding it difficult. Almost fed his captain there on that occasion, D'Anthony Stevenson. Ball switched over now to the left-hand side from Gale, finding or trying to find Emmanuel. 
will end up taking the throw himself. Emmanuel, did he remain onside? Irrelevant. Well, couldn't keep that one in play. Yeah. Good to see Charlie Smith pressing or making the initiative early. Six goals so far this season for Charlie Smith. They sit in fourth position in zone E. Tough result against Calabar last time out at the Anthony Spaulding Sports Complex. At home, Charlie Smith, they lost by what, three goals to nil. Yeah, yeah, sir. They need a good result here. This will be a very, is and will be a very difficult group. I was a little bit surprised by that result at the Anthony Spaulding Sports Complex. Didn't expect that scoreline at all. Yeah. They, they played in patches. You just saw Stoney there of Charles Smith. He was isolated on quite a few occasions. Couldn't quite get on the ball as much as he wanted. And he's, of course, their danger player. In fact, the entire game, I, I only remember a shot from Stoney. Yeah, and that was some time yeah, and in from the a second half. Angle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three goal man this season and of course this is a home match for them on the books well, yeah. so they'll be missing that type of support that they would have received inside Arnett Gardens and, and didn't they have a lot of support at, at Arnett Gardens last time out critics would say it probably doesn't matter mm. but the, to cynical one, the cynical ones I should say Yeah. let's see how Calabar performed later at home but Calabar in that match really played well and yep. you thought to yourself where was Calabar in their previous encounter <laughs> where they lost by a goal to nil mm -hmm. far from that kind of performance and consistency but they certainly look good against Charlie Smith and they had to Kingston College what can they do with this attack trying to launch that one inside the area nobody able to pounce at the top of the box but they do win it back just outside and trying to turn and couldn't on that occasion, Jaheim McLean. He's one of their danger players. Good header by McLean. Picked up well. Ball played out wide. That's Kelvin Brown over on that far side. The former Nagahead primary track star who has scored a brilliant goal so far this season, the 13-year-old, Kelvin Brown. Foul throw. Well, haven't seen that in, in a minute. Kingston College officially yet to concede this season. 20 goals for, none against. From their four matches. And a perfect 12 points. Hislop cutting inside, thinking of a shot. It goes high. And our videographer almost in danger there. The KC Massive. Not quite massive this afternoon, but they go where the team goes. <laughs> Funny enough, they are at the home of their arch rivals in sports overall. The rivalry with Kingston College and Calabar High is absolutely unparalleled, especially in track and field and at champs every year. Charlie Smith with it trying to get the ball across and they actually do clock sends this one inside nobody there quite attacking it but still an opportunity here and it goes it goes well it almost went through kingston college they finally clear their lines and the foot race is on here needs to beat the final defender does he have support brown is waiting on it what a block that is! And the clearance is made. Well, appeals for handball as well. Carvel Banton says no. I think it hit him in the face, you know. It probably did. Look at this. 
Drone was just roaring in at the back post. He Drone did well because it was an awkward bounce. Look at that for skill. Yeah, that was, in was the head. magnificent though from Kelvin Brown yeah. again. Brilliant attempt by Kelvin Brown. The back heel, awkward bounce, made the most of it. And well, the that was one of the saves of the tournament, <laughs> inadvertently. Yeah. Yeah, good move by the 13-year-old, number 13. Yep, that's a damage. In the face. Yep, took it flush in the face. Michael Smith. Yep, did Michael Smith. Who was a late change for Isaac Brown into the starting lineup for Eugene Williams was Michael Smith. Telling contribution already. Well, he might not have done boxing in his young career, but might have gotten an idea of how it felt to take one in the, in the noggin. left jab. <laughs> <laughs> I was really impressed by the speed of Brown over on that far side, though. But then again, he did do track and field. Yes. For a while, was under the tutelage of Omar Wilby at Nagahead Primary. The boy from Southboro has already made an impact in the Manning Cup and almost made another big impact there if that had crossed the line. What size for, for just 13 years of age? Serious height for his age. Here's KC on the prowl, sends inside the area, looking for the spectacular at the back post, a complete miss kick there. Now Hislop sends this one inside, and uh, a whistle is on the play. Not sure exactly what took place there. Maybe an infringement, maybe a handled ball, who knows. What we're sure was a miss kick from Hislop. Oh, yeah. Coming off the hat trick against Penwood. Four goals in the season for their number 11. They scored in two of their four games so far, Alex Hislop. Scored the first goal against Campadon in that 2 0 win. And then the hat trick. Overcooked on that occasion. Patterson. Charles Smith, they managed to keep possession. Flag is off for offside, though. Smith looking to get another attack going. Game has pretty much slowed on to a crawl here as Duaney takes the throw. Lovely turn by Clark. Decided to remain selfish though and take the shot from an acute angle. It was always going to be difficult for him to hit the target and hit it well. 
wasted opportunity. Using his strength well. O'Neill Bryan. Duaney. A little bit too strong there, Duaney. Patterson, but they are trying to shield and uh, infringement on the play there. No, it did cross the line, it's throwing to Kingston College. the left hand side it's a wonderful ball to his lap has a defender in front of him and uh, he read it all the way good work there by Duhaney Clark trying to turn on Ziminis was unsuccessful and now McLean sends it over to the far side looking for Brown Islop trying to win that battle again, lost out. Charles Smith in attack now. Oh, that's a crunching challenge coming in from O'Neill Bryan. Been on top of his game so far in the opening 18 minutes of this one. Yeah, both teams trying to adapt to the surface. Very hard surface here, so a lot of unusual bounces. Ball not necessarily rolling evenly. But yeah, that was a, a good challenge as well by Brian. Quite a few balls as well miscontrolled, so it gives opportunities or invites some of those tackles. Clark trying to turn. Gets a corner kick. Good control by Clark. We've seen him on either flank so far. This time working on the left hand side. Nice turn. This time onto the left foot. So shows his two footed ability. Daniel Clark hasn't scored this season, but good start to the game for him. Stephen Emmanuel over on that far side to take this corner kick for Charles Smith. It's a good looking one, you know, that's headed away. Served back inside. And another opportunity here by Clark. Well, wide of the mark. He's trying so very hard, the captain. A bit surprised that he didn't take a touch. Tried to rush the shot. And I think he's quite disappointed with his effort as well, Clark. Yeah, 
ball over the top. Again, in hope more than anything else. Patterson putting it into touch. Green did well, still with it. Here's Casey again, trying to get the, the ball inside from over on that far side, Kaché Fletcher, who's, who's playing a little bit more central here in this game. Last time we saw him, he was playing on the wing. On the wing. Fletcher ventured into an offside position. And the players will take a, a bit of a breather here for the water break. And uh, this match hasn't quite slipped into second gear as yet, Chris Taylor. Um, still a lot we expect from these two teams, but Charles Smith, they know that they, they have to win it in order for them to increase their percentage points and their chances of going through to the next round. Yeah, especially considering they currently sit in yeah, fourth position um, of a group that only the first two automatic, there will be four best third places and the prediction already is that a third team will come from this group and I believe it will for sure, a third team from this, but they sit in fourth position, Charlie Smith, just six points from four games. And one of the tournament, pre-tournament teams that were expected to go deep into the tournament this year with lots of work to do. Kingston College on top with 12 points. Calabar currently in second with nine. Heidel with six points, but a game in hand. And Charlie Smith as well with six points. Camperdown and Penwood complete the group. Camperdown does three points from four games. And Penwood, well, yet to get off the mark. We've seen situations like this in, in almost every year of the Manning Cup in terms of there's this one strong group that you expect a third place team to, to come out of. And sometimes they, they, they go pretty far and, and deep in the competitions. Yes, agreed. And excited to see what the home team Calabar will bring in the, in the second fixture as well because their last match against Charlie Smith, they look very good. And thorough all in of the park played very well for the full 90 minutes and very disciplined in their approach and clinical so yeah with Heidel dropping points of course against KC based on the, 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 in, the, in the boardroom it then means that a lot more teams involved because Heidel seemed like they were going to go away with this group especially with that game against Penwood that is still left to be finished which they currently lead 5-1 with not much time to go that's almost a certain three points for them so that would leave them in a nine point from four games, Heidel. And as I said, it just opened up the group a lot more with them losing three points and Kingston College gaining three. I'm wondering if there's still doubt on Heidel's ambition this year in the aftermath of the ruling. And uh, I, I guess the early answer is no, not really, when you consider the circumstances around that ruling and that the ineligible players only played in that game and the latter part of that game against Kingston College in the first, the first yeah. game of the season. So maybe they, they will be all right. Here is, oh, was that a late challenge? A shot from distance goes over the top as well. But then my question to you, Donna, would be, if you're leading comfortably, and obviously they were very comfortable against Kingston College, why take that chance? To 
Well, so many questions that can be asked in surrounding the circumstances of it. But uh, I don't think we'll ever get the full story unless someone decides to tell the full story of it. But they're still very much in it. So to these two teams eager to get three points from this fixture. Ziminis with a throw. Three points here for Charlie Smith and the group will be even tighter, of <laughs> yeah. course. Yeah. Because then Kingston College wouldn't be able to extend their lead at top of the group. And Charlie Smith will be right back into it. A win could take them as high as second position, <coughs> more than likely third. Charlie Smith yes, on the attack. Charlie Smith, at the moment. They're reworking it again, Charlie Smith. There are, what, four players waiting on the ball inside the era. That could have been awkward, but it was seen all the way by Malik Williams. Yeah, the bones, as we said, very uncertain. But yeah, even though Charlie Smith have, have pressed the advantage a lot more and attacked the 18-yard area of Kingston College, we haven't really seen an, an out-and-out -out chance for them just yet. Still haven't seen a whole lot from Stoney, the captain. Uh, Daniel Clark is the one seeing a lot of the action in the attack in third for Charlie Smith. But they need their number nine more involved. Struggling to score goals, Charlie Smith, just the 5-1 win over Penwood in their second game. Five of their six goals. And yet this is their fifth game now. So really need to be busy up front. So maybe no surprise that, as you said, the, the usual suspects in terms of goal scoring for them just missing in action at the moment. Zimini's winning it. Clark was looking for the foul. It didn't go his way. Zimini's for that searching ball and the header well away. But Green nods it inside. Fletcher looking to go over the top. Brown is quick, but he's not Superman and uh, went through to be taken by Deontay Gary. KG affair so far between the two. And the Kingston College is just biding their time here. Clark. Now Duaney attacking the final third to the byline and was thrown off just a little bit, but maybe because there was a, a touch on it, yep, for a corner kick. Manuel to take it for Charter Smith. Not the best delivery at all, actually. Kingston College finding it easy to clear their lines, and there's a turn by Byfield. Haven't really called his name a lot in this game. And the free kick going in favor of Charter Smith again. This could be interesting in a central position and 
quite a few Charles Smith players are lining up to take it. Now the wall is being constructed by Malik Williams in goal for Kingston College. You can see where the wall is going to be set up, still outside the 18 yard box. So, again, some way out here. Who's going to take this for Charles Smith? Only one contender. Here it comes, and there it goes. Yeah, disappointing from Smith in the end. Michael Smith, the centre back, splicing it. Yeah, leaning away from it too much. Didn't get over it at all, did Smith? Quite ambitious in the end. Nowhere close. You look at the results over the last 10 to 11 years, there's been only one nil all draw between these two teams. Came back on the 29th of September 2012. But apart from that, goals. Yep, all has been a goal in this fixture. Yep. Yep. There was a, a classic 3 3 draw at one stage. That 2013. Was in, yeah. Yeah, that was a second round match between these two. 8th of November. 2013. When you look at the last couple of matchups, it's been totally dominated by KC. 5 0 against them last season. And yeah, back in 2021, a 3 0 win for KC. So yeah, big performances for Kingston College against Charlie Smith. One Charlie Smith victory in 2012. The 15th of September, 1 0 win. But apart from that, it's been all the purples in this head to head. Well, here's Emmanuel, and it's headed away by Siao. Picked up again by Richards. Siao with the header, not convincing on this occasion. An opportunity, oh, wonderful football. Tony tries to get there. The clearance is made. And it's behind for a corner kick. Probably the best chance of the afternoon for Charlie Smith. Definitely the best worked one. It's just an opportunity in the area. Well, unable to get the final touch was their leading goal scorer. Getting involved. He's a man you'd want in that position. Rekwon Stoney. Scored a hat-trick against Penn with their number nine. But nothing since. So corner kick to Charlie Smith. Can they finally make it count? It's a good delivery at the back post. I don't think he was quite expecting it, you know. Was that Stevenson? I thought it was low. With the header. Yeah. Came off of low for sure, though. I think it was a, a combination play from, from Charlie Smith. Not meant to be, but as you said, caught him by surprise. Yeah, I think so because there was a misheader in there somewhere. Nice delivery from Stoney. Yeah. With the left foot. Aiming for that penalty spot area. Here they come again, looking to turn. Stoney getting more involved here. Shot was charged down. Stoney again, applying the pressure on Ziminis. Ziminis loses it. And finally, it's hacked out of the area by Kingston College. Clear and Charlie nine. Smith will try again. Was there a handled ball involved there? The referee was right there, you know. Set play on, and they will play on. And KC on the break, and Hislop on it. And the ball was a poor release, but it goes through in the end. An opportunity here for Brown. And the keeper, big with the save. Yeah. I, I think that was a bad call by Carvel Banton. It was obvious that, I'm not sure who was on the ground from Kingston College, but it was a clear handball. This is the opportunity for Stoney. Nice shot going through the legs there. 
and lucky to get away with it. Cleared off the line in the end. It didn't actually make its way to the line. It was Brian who was in the right place with Again. the clearance, yeah. He's had a good game. Just look at, well, it's gone a bit too far, but a moment before that, certainly a handball on the ground, used his arm to actually maneuver the ball. And yeah, I think there should have been a whistle from Carvel Banton there. And maybe luckily for him, it didn't result in a goal. Mm. It nearly did. And then I think there would have also been a question of offside against Kelvin Brown as well. <laughs> Good save, though, coming in yeah. by Gary. Had to be brave, right? So play is about to resume in short order. There are a couple of players down, including the Charles Smith custodian. So we're hearing that a yellow card has been shown to Tevin Richards. We're going to have to double check that as to the reason. But he's animated, isn't he? Eugene Williams on the sidelines, the Charles Smith head coach. Yeah. Is a Charles Smith number four who would have received the yellow card, a central midfielder. As the uh, play resumes now. Well, here's Green. Simonese. Yep, just confirmed the yellow card. I was picked up by Tevin Richards. Still trying to ascertain why. Well, that one slipped by. That it did. We have a little over five minutes to go, plus time added for stoppages. The chances have been rear, <laughs> but they have been in every big chances. Of, of that yeah, word. That <laughs> <laughs> Again, a miscontrol, though. That's been frustrating for the coaching staff of both these teams.
trying to lay that one off the captain headed away his love fortunate to get there lost it long and this is some good defending by Reese Clayton Again, the ball over the top. Yeah, and the high pass is just the long pass, it just haven't worked. Hanging the breeze, and it's been easy for the back line. Yeah, they are kicking into the breeze in this first half, aren't they? Yeah, it's been easy for Charlie Smith so far. The three man back line of Charlie Smith, well renowned. Starting from the days of Jerome Waite when he was at the helm. Charlie Smith in the attacking third. Flag up for offside. So this is the situation that led to just look at that there. Clear hand ball from a KC perspective and actually use his hand to pull the ball around. Yeah, that was the John Green. The John Green, yeah. Very surprising that he got away with that. And then look at this, it led to this opportunity for Brown, who could have added his second of the season. And you have to say, from a neutral's perspective, glad that he didn't score because I think that was something missed by Carvel Brown. And he would have lost control of the ball. Carvel Banton, sorry, would have lost control of the ball had it not been for his hand. Yeah. Ball played through to Clark. He should get there, one to aim for. Well, no, he doesn't quite get there. And it's been a frustrating afternoon for him so far for him too. Up with some space here can he capitalize two running inside the area it goes in at the back post again trying to hit it on the volley and, and green couldn't quite get over it couldn't get the power behind it as well Here's Casey again. Ball over the top again, looking for Hislop, but to be fair, Hislop has been pretty much manhandled over on this near side and unable to get by his marker. Yeah, Doheny doing a good job there. Green opting for the long throw. Or rather, Ziminis, I should say, Ziminis. And again, it's Duhini there. Well, time challenge. Oh, kept him play well. That was a lovely touch, you know, from Green, but he lost it eventually. Nobody up for Charlie Smith. Ryan Patterson couldn't be kept in play. Three minutes of stoppages to be played. Oh, 
Safety first for Xiao. Well, the game is almost in park at the moment as uh, players gear up for the halftime interval. Usually a critical moment in football matches. If you can try and sneak a goal in there and go into the break with some momentum, that's that would be key. But it's, it has been pretty warm conditions so far, so the players probably eager to get back into the dressing room of sorts. Brown playing a little bit more central now. Based on what we've seen, both these teams might need a locksmith before they can utilize that key. Again, that ball to his lap. But the Charles Smith defenders doing relatively well so far to keep Kingston College at bay. We have just about a minute to go before the interval, and the Charles Smith player is down. I think he just landed awkwardly there, Stoney. Got a hand in the face as well. Oh, there, yeah. there's also that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is that one. Nothing malicious, but unfortunate. I don't think a lot of time will be added with that last bit of stoppage there, and that is it for the first half. The chances have been few and far between, and even with that in play, neither team taking advantage of the rare opportunities. Clark, in particular, has had a couple chances for Charlie Smith, who have really been knocking in this first half, but with a higher intensity and with even more chances they have been unable to make the breakthrough three points pivotal for them kingston college they are top of the group uh, they are in cruise control at the moment but they'd want to do better come the second half which will get on the way in a few minutes time because at the halftime interval well it's goalless here at Calabar high So we're looking ahead to the Costa Cup action on Friday. Fogo Road will be taking on Garvey Maceo High. That's Friday, 3 p.m., 4 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean. You can watch that one on Sportsmax 2 and Scene TV as well as on the Sportsmax app. You don't want to miss it this Friday afternoon, 3 o'clock, 4 in the Eastern Caribbean.
yeah, and it's overcast. And uh, in the background, you'll see to your left the rain over the Blue Mountain Range. And uh, we're just watching it, hoping that it passes by and doesn't affect the playing area uh, right here at uh, Calabar High School. The players are set to make their way back out onto the field. Chris Taylor is still with me and uh, it was a pedestrian first half, wasn't it? And we're hoping for better for the second stanza. Hard work on the surface for both these teams. I think attacking the 18 yard better went to Charlie Smith. They would have won the award for that. Not creating maybe enough chances though. Chances few for both these teams. Kingston College were looking to do their work on the counter. I'd love to see a better, a better midfield showing from then in, in its in the second 45 minutes yeah mentioned the rain uh, on the blue mountain range in the distance and uh, just hoping that it stays away it's moving left and uh, not quite coming in our direction at least that's the hope but you can see that telling shot where the, the rains in uh, <laughs> in the distance but it's even more ominous over on the other side we can tell you that so just waiting on the Charlie Smith players to to take their positions yeah what dark clothes there right above the KFC balloon and to the right. It's actually raining in the distance to the left of that, the KFC balloon. But yeah. There's a, there it is, there's a yeah, it's talking raining about. right on the hills there. Red Hills to be exact. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of land up there, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of land on the hills of, of Red. So the second half is now underway. Charles Smith with the kickoff. And uh, they showed a lot of intensity in that first half. Had a couple of chances. One big opportunity falling to their number nine, Stoney. Really couldn't capitalize on the chance, Charles Smith. Maybe Kingston College will show a little bit more ambition come this second half. Let's see. Remember that they're coming off a big win over Penwood 14 nil they would like to think that they didn't score all their goals in that game yeah hat trick for Demario Daly their number nine and Alex Hislop their number 11 they're moving quickly through the gears now Clark opting to send that one out wide looking to provide one inside the area they still have the opportunity ball comes inside Tony was trying to control couldn't and uh, Kelvin Brown does really well, you know, in keeping possession of that one. Now the play has been switched over to the far side. His up. He'll keep that one in play. Two to aim for inside the box. It comes across the area. And it's headed <laughs> well. to Green. On a platter now. What a block that is. Still a chance for KC. The shot is blocked again. And across the face of goal. Well, couldn't get the vital touch. A goal kick has been signaled. And the change as well. Substitution. What a chance here for Kelvin Brown. Should have been a better finish from him. And yeah, well, that as well. Well wide in the end. Brown not going to the open spot in the goal. Going back across the keeper. And the defenders got in the way. But what a chance that was for Kelvin Brown and Kingston College. I think George Pringle has just come on for... Charlie Smith will confirm that in just a, a little while yep Pringle for Daniel Clark well the captain taken off it's gonna be interesting to see the story behind that change is it an injury is it tactical the Charlie Smith well Pringle did score two goals against Penwood in that 5-1 win 
and they need goals, Charlie Smith. Did come off in the game, in their last game against Calabar, did daily. So maybe no surprise. Sorry, did Clark, their captain, Daniel Clark. What a big chance wasted by KC though. So many bites at the cherry. Three chances to finish it and couldn't get it done. I think you can put that down as the best opportunity of the game. For sure. Uh, opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie Smith, Stevenson, both fed out wide, Pringle trying to get into the action early, opportunity here, oh he does well on the byline and then lost it, whole football again over the top. Looking for the free kick. Got the free kick. Did Byfield. Yeah, it was tripped up there. Both players tried to get to the ball, but Reese Clayton a little bit too strong in the challenge causing the infringement <laughs> McLean to deliver for Kingston College here's deliver inside and easily repelled Casey will try again. Green. Green does really well. Sends it across and uh, didn't quite make its destination there. Good turn. Needed a better pass. That's a late challenge. Yellow card may come out. Yep, late on that one. Ziminis doesn't look as if he's been off to the races. Ziminis in this game. And he goes into the referee's book. As a Charles Smith player goes down, eyes are on the weather. The temperature has dropped a, a couple degrees since the start of this game. We can tell you that it's a bit windy. And uh, the rain at the moment is on the outskirts here at Calabar High but it may make an entrance shortly and they will have to find the cover soon maybe they are preparing for the second game though Calabar will be involved they'll be taken on High Del High that's expected to be a good game too The Calabar old boy will be on commentary for that second game. Ricardo Chambers. Yeah. 
it is ominous. We heard the sound of thunder just a minute or so ago. Officials, their eyes will be on the system that is nearby. Not the sight Charles Smith spectators would want to see. Well, they are preparing. In the meantime, Charles Smith, they have a, a free kick. Stoney is the one to deliver. Here it comes, inside and wide of the mark. Ooh. Wasn't in shot just now, but there was a brilliant flash of lightning in the distance that, that caught spectators by surprise and the thunder less than 30 seconds after. And I am not sure how long we'll be able to last here at Calabar High before the players are taken off the field because that was pretty close but we play on Kingston College charging forward can they go a goal ahead another infringement on the play free kick to Kingston College What's the 30 for 30 rule that you always speak about, Chris Taylor? Yep. Once the, light, the thunderclap is within 30 seconds of the lightning strike, you're to move from the outdoor area and take cover. And then you count 30 minutes from that. Well, another lightning strike out of your view as well as Kingston College with the free kick. Can they take the advantage here? Well, the fourth official. As this one is sent at the back post, kept alive and turned wide of the mark. Well, that was a, another big opportunity. Again, it falls to Hessler. The fourth official has, has signaled to Carville Banton to come off. This is a chance for KC, which is wide of the mark. And Banton has decided to continue. Well. He probably knows the area very well. Yeah, well. I'm not sure anybody knows lightning very well. <laughs> here on the side of caution. Please switched over to that far side and it's a royal battle happening over there. Trevon Lowe earning the free kick for the Charles Smith team. ball sent inside the area and this is comfortably over for a goal kick and the players are leaving the field precaution taken it's uh, has been a regular occurrence this season with officials erring on the side of caution. Play has been stopped due to lightning in the distance. And with an incident taking place, especially at, in recent times in the, the Costa Cup, is, it was, and the players and officials being directly affected, no chance has been taken. And uh, we will take or leave from our broadcast position for the time being. 
reminding you that it's goalless between these two. It's a big clash in the Manning Cup in what is considered to be the group of death. And uh, both teams unable to get on the score sheet and play has been stopped due to lightning. If they stick to the book, there should be no action for the next 30 minutes. And if the conditions clear, play will resume. of the field now they plan to resume the match giving both teams 10 minutes to warm up and we're back with more schoolboy football action up to you donald uh, thank you uh, jenny uh, christiana is still with me in the commentary box uh barely uh that was eventful the last uh, 45 minutes or so and, and to be fair i am actually a little bit surprised i actually have thought that the match would have been uh, called off uh, but they have managed to well, we're seeing a situation here, and these are live pitches where Eugene Williams is making a case to the officials that the pitch is actually still waterlogged, and he doesn't, well, it, he appears as if he's uh, uncomfortable, let me just use that word, with the situation here, because he's actually on the field, and he's remonstrating with the officials, so... Chris Taylor, what are your thoughts on this? I, I actually agree with him. I, I actually think there's a big, heavy water by the goal area, so it affects the movement of the goalkeepers. In fact, to the opposite end, by the corner flag and towards the corner, you can see massive puddles of water. And his um, anger, I think, is just that he doesn't think the ball will be able to, to flow freely, and the players' movements will certainly be affected. And that's where his team would be attacking, right? Well, I think it's irrelevant whether they are attacking or defending there. I, don't, I, I, I think he'll be looking at it from a holistic perspective. Obviously, he'll be looking out for his team, but just generally for the game of football. He's been around a long time, Eugene Williams. And I, I must say, I, I had problems even from before the game was called up. I thought it should have been, the whistle should have blown maybe five to ten minutes earlier with lots of lightning flashes. The fourth official had signaled for the players to, be, to come off and the central referee continued. And I'm not surprised that, that both teams have issues here again. Well, to be fair, only, <laughs> well, only well, based on what we are seeing here, only the Charlie Smith contingent having a problem. And now another discussion is being had as to, well, the urgency of the situation in either case. Is the field ready for football to continue? That's a big question being asked at the moment. Well, and the, the, the spectators have come and they want to uh, see football being played but I, I suspect that they also want to see quality football being played and to be fair even before the rain uh, began uh, the, the the level and the standard of the football wasn't up to scratch let's say but uh, he's having some issues uh, Eugene Williams the head coach of Charter Smith
we see different shots of the of the playing area and uh well you can judge for yourself folks if you think it's if, if you think that's of the and it doesn't even have to be at the the best quality but if it is of quality for play to continue we can also tell you still that overcast conditions um, still with us and lightning and thunder again nearby so maybe even this discussion is is moot there's a shot of uh, conditions away to our left this time the previous storm had come across to our right but there's a, another ominous weather system over to our left and we have already seen flashes of lightning and Chris Taylor has done the, the math and the count and he figures that the 30 second rule should be in effect once more and if that's the case you're saying that they should be off again quite so as you can see another lightning strike coming through and I mean if not no <laughs> well irrespective of what kind of math you're using you won't get to 30 seconds <laughs> you know so I, I, I just think it's, it's dangerous and unnecessary and, and to force the, the issue Look that's at on this. the field yeah this is on the field of play and, and not to mention the goal area as well which is a critical part because that's where the goalkeeper will operate from and his movement will be seriously affected what is the thinking behind the officials pushing the agenda of this game what what, what do you think because of course you've been official you've been an official but you tend to stick by the book and maybe there aren't repercussions that we are aware of but what would be going through the referees minds at this point in time while they're pushing to complete this fixture well i i'm not sure if the organizers are asking the referees to 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 push on and so on but i just think from an official perspective you have to be also looking to protect your game the reputation and so on it's clear to me that these conditions are not ideal or ready for for the, for the game to be continued even in the live shots here you can see the charlie smith players passing around the ball and the ball can't move freely within the 18 and 6 yard area which is the business area so yeah and especially with the lightning as well yeah i'm, I'm not happy about it Donald. The, the original starting time would have been or the resumption time would have been about 10 minutes ago since then there have been deliberation there have been arguments there have been phone calls <laughs> I, I sense that there's also been a, a level of introspection as well as to what to do in the aftermath of this and charlie smith they have been actively demonstrating kingston college they have been a little bit more reserved I, I, and i was making the point about whether it would affect one team or the next the case brought forward by vas reynolds to the officials is that it would be difficult for his team to defend as much as it would have been difficult for the charles smith team to attack yeah i'm surprised that i'm surprised that there's much there's there's a lot of deliberation here i, I just think it's it's not ready for play so why force the issue that's where i am at I, i'm but, not but I sure if it's at it's a perspective that they need to push on and if so i would put my hand up and i say i think they are wrong mm. to do that i think Vas i, think, I don't think bit... it's fair to either squad true i think Vas reynolds though is a little bit more amenable to, to continuing it it appears than uh, eugene williams which well, he's which on top means, of the group which means <laughs> <laughs> which also means that chad smith would then have to be careful if the officials insist on continuing with the game because then charlie smith who already they're in a somewhat precarious position in the group they would stand to lose points from they this will continue picture. on the dispute hmm. and i you know you have seen situations why like this where the coaches or the administration their hands might be forced I am, i'm hoping this is not one of them but you can see in the live shot certainly on the half that charlie smith are inside the 18 and 60 yard area it's just well what's interesting and what, what i like about the fixtures this season in particular is that there is a little bit more time in between the games usually in the past there were there were very short stretches where matches were played every three days not necessarily this uh, this this season there there are more stretches of rest so i am thinking that it would be prudent if the matches 
is postponed or if it's rearranged because it wouldn't be a hassle as it was in the past. But they do have backed up games. There's a there's a Kingston College, uh, there's a there's a Heidel Camperdown game that needs to be continuous continued as well. Um, by all indications, I don't think the Heidel game against Calabar will be played this afternoon at any rate. Uh, and then the possibility of completing this game at another time. So this group is already uh, bursting at the seams in terms of uh, what is available in terms of dates for these rescheduled matches. I care less about the group fixtures. Okay, all right. I care about the safety of the players right. and seeing a proper game of football. And, and from that perspective, I mean, it's still heavily overcast. There's lightning around. Every two minutes, there's a lightning strike. But yet, we're out in the open on the field. Yeah, I think that's ridiculous. We've already had an incident this season where youngsters and officials have been taken to the hospital because of lightning. Right? So, right? There's been incidents even since that with a champion and Arden match as well in the Manning Cup. So, so with, and, and, and a case where the Arden goalkeeper was struck. So what are we doing out in the open trying to force an issue which is unnecessary? And whilst they decide, the players are out on the field, <laughs> exposed. It, it's ridiculous, whether from an ISA perspective or from the officials as well, body, ridiculous. Well, approximately, what, 63 minutes? Or, well, 33 minutes uh, of the time remaining in this game. And as I said, uh, maybe the ISA officials thinking that there's already a strain on the, the fixture list. And, and, and uh, but, but I think that can be sorted out in the boardroom, obviously. In, in much but, Tunnel, conditions why are we we're, still we're, talking yeah. about the ISA fixtures? That can't be paramount. That can't be paramount. I'm sorry. The competition can't be more important than the safety and well-being of the school boys involved. I'm sorry. Cannot be. And the officials and everybody else who is exposed to this scenario. Look at this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think a map would have been better. And even as we say this, the place is getting a lot more overcast. And as you said, the, the lightning and thunder closer together. And there's the addition, the additional issue of there being no lights here, um, and I suppose that this this would come into effect even more now with the overcast conditions. And would this game even survive another half an hour before we see close to complete darkness? I think there are issues that we are certainly not aware of, Chris, as to the urgency or what's the urgency uh, with uh, having to continue this game this afternoon. There, there's obviously something that we're missing. <laughs> Clearly. But that wouldn't change your mind regardless. No. As I said, obviously, there's another agenda at hand. There is Principal Montague, Woolmers Girls, out there, and carrying sponge as well to try and, and, and mop up the area. As I said, that's just one of a few concerns at the venue. As I said, I, I was a little bit surprised with the fact that they had deemed, the officials in particular, had deemed the game to continue because it was so obvious that the, the, the surface was unfit. And I think that's a term that's, that's used. The surface was actually unfit for football to continue. But if uh, they have a mandate, it has superseded what Chris Taylor deems as common sense. And safety. So are you saying that a, a, a schedule or a, or a set of fixtures are more important than the safety of persons? That's an issue for me. If that is what is paramount, 
that's a big issue for me and should be a big issue for everyone watching and and the parents will send out their youngsters as well Well, we've been on here for a little over 10 minutes, almost 15 minutes, and still no football action to report. But if you are just joining us, uh, just to say that it is goalless between these two teams, uh, Kingston College and Charlie Smith High. The game was stopped in the 57th minute because a lightning strike or lightning strikes were nearby. And so they uh, took the precaution to take the players off the field of play. Subsequent to that, there was heavy rainfall saturating uh, the area where the football was being played here at Calabar High School. The referee has come now to the middle of the park. He is calling his officials and uh, I believe a decision is going to be made in short order. Well, they are going to restart this game and Eugene Williams who had taken a stance by being on the field has finally ended his protest. And we can tell you, uh, you probably would have just missed it in your shot, but there was another lightning strike in the background and uh, it is within a 15 second countdown of uh, of uh, the thunder again in the aftermath of that lightning strike this is in danger of becoming a farce But the action has resumed. Charter Smith on the attack, looking to go ahead. Kingston College repelling the danger for the time being. Although I suspect that's not the only danger they'll be concerned about. Ball over the top, that should be shepherded out. Keeper Williams collects. Casey on the attack. Can they go ahead in this one? Not on that occasion. Couldn't quite get the shot off again. His luck. What's going through the minds of the players? I'm sure youthful, youth, youthful ex enthusiasm is the order of the day, or exuberance as well. And they want to just play some ball, but obviously they are not the decision makers.
it's been a pretty open affair so far. Another resumption. Nice turn inside, and the shot is just over the top. Coming in from Kelvin Brown. Kingston College still trying to regain the possession here. Ball over the top was looking for Stevenson. It's the back there doing some defending. There's an infringement on the play. Charlie Smith with the free kick sent high inside the box and it's put out for well the flag went up for offside at any rate Emmanuel with the throw. Richard sends it across, but the interception is made, and Casey trying to break now. Trying to switch the play over to the right hand side. Emmanuel with the foot in play and gets the return ball on the left, but just ran into traffic.
not the best or most convincing clearance on that occasion, but Malik Williams will map it up, so to speak. That's a late challenge that came across from uh, young Kamal Patterson. Just a talking to from the referee, nothing more. Yeah, probably looking to get away without a booking there as well. Definitely late. Michael Spitz delivery going goalwards the keeper seeing it all the way no issues well, if that was really a shot quite ambitious from Smith Not the first time he's gone to goal from range probably won't be the last either well it's another dimension of football that we didn't quite expect That's a lovely collection there from Byfield, but he's lost it, and it goes the other way. This is dinged forward by Smith into an era of uncertainty, and Ziminis was back there, and he had to put in a clearance as well. Wasn't confident that his goalkeeper, Williams, would have gotten there in time, Ziminis. Ball passed into the business here from Smith. Thought it was a bit too far in front of his teammates, but yeah. Here's the uncertainty, but Zimini's kept his eye on it and there did a, well. There was a bit of a backspin there on it as well, yes. right? Using a lot of cricketing terms in the last minute or so. <laughs> Smith again goes aerial. Clearance, again, not too convincing. Trying to tap that on phone was... Tevin Richards, but it now comes the other way in Kingston College on the prowl. What can they do with it, this attack now? Swept inside well. And Fletcher trying to place that one through. Another shot from distance. Cannons into a Charles Smith defender. Casey will try again. Nice first touch from Byfield, who's out wide. And that is... Well, not quite put into touch. But Charles Smith getting in some trouble and they'll have to do some defending. Patterson couldn't get there for KC. But Stoney has it for Charles Smith. Runs away from a challenge. Running into additional yard of space. Plays it out wide. Not quite, but there was a late challenge on Charles Smith's number nine. kind of game that Charlie Smith have to force for a result they have to force the issue they sit in fourth position just six points from four games and still a lot to go to do in a very difficult group Casey coming into this game with a cushion 12 points from four games four from four lots of determination there from Stoney who lost the boot in the process Ball flicked on, not clear properly. Big chance, Malik Williams in the way. I don't think he knew a whole lot about it. It was struck hard, but straight to the KC custodian. That was a big chance for Charlie Smith. And it seemed like it fell to Gale, Kevon Gale. has got to do better there though. Hit it point blank on the goalkeeper. Anywhere left or right, and that would have been a goal. time as well wow byfield collects it ball thread through he's onside the keeper is off his line and is beaten casey with a chance and skana begging hislop again the man was the outlet for kingston college over on the far side but it seems as if gary did enough big tackle from stevenson this was a chance did fall to kevon gale 
And he's got to do better there. Keeper beaten here, but just look at this tackle coming in from Stevenson. Excellent. Mm, yeah. Excellent from Stevenson. Hislop lurking, looking for his fifth goal of the season, Alex Hislop. As a part of the Jamaica College winning team from last season, Alex Hislop. Yeah, obviously his final year of uh, schoolboy football as Kingston College with uh, the corner kick. There's uh, been a bit of a delay. But play is about to be restarted in short order. Here's a corner kick. Ball sent inside of the near post. Well, uh, I think a water break has been taken. And uh, that's uh, a little bit of a surprise, but the players getting the instructions from the referees. Have <laughs> and uh, Chris Taylor is... <laughs> Chris Taylor is usually quite miserable in the, in the commentary box, but um, I'm sure he has his reasons <laughs> this afternoon as to why he's a little bit more restless than normal. No goals in his fixtures yet. So there are a couple of chances since the resumption and uh, Hist upon this occasion was denied by D'Anthony Stevenson. Back to live action. Well, that was done well. And uh, the finish, though, didn't have a lot of power behind it. Well, Stoney inside the area. Stoney looking for options. Emmanuel places it and too much on it on that occasion. And it's going to be a goal kick. Very difficult conditions to both attack and defend in. Trying to get out of their own defensive third, Kingston College. Zibinese does really well. And the transition is on. Kingston College going forward. Can they capitalize? He has space to shoot. And he didn't shoot much. Oh, but there's a slip. And it's put away. 
Kingston College with the advantage. And it's Jaheim McLean. Or no, it's Byfield who was inside the box, mopping up the mistake. And uh, Kingston College with the advantage by a goal to nil. And, uh, well, it's disaster for the Charlie Smith custodian. What a mistake. Casey did benefit from one of these in their match against Camperdown. And again, ah, oh, slippery fingers there. Gary with a mistake. Very unfortunate for him. But credit to Deshaun Byfield, who never switched off their number 19. His first goal of the season. What a big lead this could be for Kingston College. 15 minutes away from a flawless 5 out of 5 record. Well, that was a challenge that was timely according to the referee, so it's a goal kick. Green with the turn. I was looking for a call in his favor. Referee said play on, and they do, but it's Charles Smith with the possession now. Not many players forward for them. Ball. Sent through for Charlie Smith. That's another lovely ball played through. Hits the bonnet. Hits up. Trying to send that one inside and it's cleared away. Green on the byline. Challenge coming in on green. Corner kick to Kingston College. see we're making a change in short order Damari Daly coming on for Kelvin Brown nice to be able to bring on a player who has four goals behind his name so far coming off of a hat-trick as well Daly against Penwood ball come inside the area and that is wide of the mark Byfield Fresh after scoring his first goal of the season by field. Probably should have been two. Nice delivery into the area. Lovely trajectory. Oh, by field. Just opened his foot a little bit too much. Should have finished it.
Here they come again. Lovely first take. But uh, couldn't do a lot with it after, afterwards daily, but they do well to recover. Kingston College, green, needing options. Play that one inside. Oh, lovely skill, but can't get by a second defender, the goal scorer. And the clearance is made. Casey looking for a second goal to really seal this off. Patterson on it. Patterson sends it across. That's a lovely ball inside the area. A chance for Kingston College while the whistle goes. What a pass, I agree. Offside, yes, but he wouldn't have known that Byfield. Is it Byfield with the pass, though? Lovely technique by Byfield. I mean, that couldn't have been any more accurate. Beautiful delivery from a wide area. But yeah, offside in the end. <laughs> See, you don't agree with that call. Yeah, the officials have been in the microscope this afternoon. Well, that's ambitious. But it barely reached the keeper in the end. That was from McLean. Michael Smith trying to play the ball forward and couldn't do a lot with it. Green gives chase. Keeps it in play. Green does well with the feint. Ball somehow manages to get across. And the shot is wayward. Coming in from the substitute, Demario Daly. That's a lovely setup, you know, by KC. Can they make it two? There's an appeal for a handled ball, but play continues. Here's a shot. Oh, that's a fabulous save, you know. Deontay Geary had to stand tall to parry that one over the top. It was Fletcher with the effort. It was on target, but denied by Deontay Geary. Yeah, not in the best of moods, Geary. So even though he executed that save, very much aware that he gave away the one goal for Kingston College. So you can see from his reaction, still feeling, but that was still a wonderful save. Strong, double-handed save, but you can tell from his, his face that it's, it's, it's bearing on him. Still thinking about that mistake. Has to let that go. Charles Smith making a change as well. Stephen Emmanuel is been taken off and Anthony Allen is coming on they're looking for his first goal in Allen here's a swinger inside still not cleared keeper in no man's land and that was wide of the mark as well he's up with another opportunity number seven Gary came and Gary missed weak attempt at the punch and luckily for him the attempt was wide. Green on his right foot looking for space. That's a lovely ball inside. Can they make it two? It's wide. It's Deshaun Byfield again. He could have had a, a hat trick in this game. Yeah, what a chance. Charlie Smith defense opening up, especially with these slippery conditions. That certainly looks like a foul. But yeah, opening up this Charlie Smith three-man defense line, not adapting well to the conditions, Charlie Smith. Lots of mistakes, and that was a lovely pass. 
Bayfield kept his eye on it to give him credit. But yeah, just ending up on the wrong side of the post. Charles was making another change. Good idea to hit the back to go for the far triangle, but just missed it, Byfield. Kevon Gale been taken out and uh, replacing him. Andre Langford. Kick coming inside. And it was easily handled by Kingston College. Let's see what they do on this occasion. Charlie Smith. Ball sent inside the area. And, uh, it goes behind for a goal kick. Daly lost it. Ball sent out wide and Langford trying to set his teammate free over that right hand side, but the puddle caught them. Casey coming forward, and it is Daly. Brian, they're trying to force that through was Byfield. Free kick to Charlie Smith. Can they pull something out of a hat here? That's the intention, I'm sure. Tevin Richards is behind it. He has to contend with a three-man wall as well. I'm sure he wouldn't mind trying to test Malik Williams from here in these conditions, and he tries to do so. It's not too far off the target, but it was off the target. <laughs> and uh, yep, a, a tad ambitious there, Tevin Richards, in that attempt, but it was always going to be on the cards. Not close enough for Charlie Smith. And they're in a precarious position in this group now, in fourth position and steering down the panel, pa the panel of another loss. Or the barrel, barrel. of a gun, right? <laughs> As we take a look at the sports max that moment, and it was some beautiful movement by Kingston College, and the resulting effort forced a save, and it was a fabulous one. And Deontay Geary full stretch to his right there denying Kajay Fletcher yep Sportsmax app moment of the game courtesy of the Sportsmax app Zimenez would want to get out of the area quickly Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, that was never going to be a good idea. Well, she's watching her sports match up. Natalia Godfrey, sports psychologist for Kingston College, was actually a part of the 2016 Cornwall College setup when they won and has done a lot of work with Kingston College since their success in 2018 and 2021 behind Lord Lord Bernard, as well as Andrew Edwards and now Vassal Reynolds. Would have worked with Andrew Edwards and Vassal Reynolds, I think, at Manchester for a while as well. So lots of success at the schoolboy level. And you can see certainly the, what the difference a sports psychologist can make, of course, getting into the, the heads of these youngsters with all the things they are going through generally. And we are going to see more often as we go across the schools. I know that St. George's College has uh, implemented that service as well with Dr. Olivia Rose also there. Yeah. And it's, it's something that's been picked up. Not enough, though, Donna. Not enough, Not enough. obviously. Not enough. But it I, I think he's going to need it after this game, I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> Eugene Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's quite frustrated. And obviously, look at how he conceded as well. But yeah, Chad is still not quite out of it. And uh, they're trying to get back into the action. We're going to talk about the most valuable player in just a little while. And uh, one player who has been a standout has been the Kingston College defender, O'Neill Bryan. Yeah. Hasn't been called upon much in the since, well, since play has resumed, but mm -hmm. in the early, in the first what 57 minutes, he was a, a big part of of the of the Kingston College back line. Certainly swatted most of the attempts and some important tackles against the Charlie Smith attackers. As I say, apart from that one chance that Charlie Smith have gotten since, they really have had no, nothing much going forward. And Green has been asked, Dejon Green has been asked to play a deeper role than he normally does, or rather a more attacking role than he normally does. Actually, kind of switched with Jaheim McLean, who was playing a more defensive role than he normally does for Kingston College well, if he has as been part of the supporting cast. Yeah, but well, there hasn't been much attacking of quality from a Kingston College perspective. Yes, they have gotten the goal. But that's it. Yeah. Ball sent inside, that's nodded away. An opportunity here for Charlie Smith as it's played out wide. What can they do with this? It's Allen. Still inside the area. They've had so many touches inside the box, but nothing of fruit. Here's an opportunity. Can something be had from this? Langford sends it wide. Allen trying to get a shot off. Didn't have the space. Another effort from distance will just trickle by the post. Closing out the area. Well done. There is Brian. Walking towards his goalkeeper there, number four. Very good first half, very good start to the second half before the interruption. Since then, of course, obviously with slippery conditions, harder for the defenders and the goalkeepers. Charlie Smith suffering under it as well. Casey have been able to find a lot more areas of openness in the defence line. So far, just one goal. Probably should have had two or three So another change to be made by Kingston College. Deshaun Byfield, the goal scorer, makes his exit. And uh, I think that's Christana Myers who's going to be coming on. Nope, the main smash. Well, that was strong from Demario Daly.
Casey looking for a second here. Not a lot of time remaining. Allen trying to thread that one through. Hislop has it. Trying to switch the play. Some good defending there. Hasn't had a, a happy afternoon, Eugene Williams. Not a lot of time remaining, in fact, seconds for Charlie Smith. And there it is. It felt like eons, but we've come to the conclusion of this matchup. And Kingston College, they have taken all the points. And another frustrating afternoon for Eugene Williams and his Charlie Smith team. And even in the end, it was a mistake at the back that cost Kingston College, that caused Kingston College to get the goal and maximum points for Basil Reynolds. It's on Byfield opening his account this season in uh, mopping up the spill by Deontay Geary inside the area. And, uh, at the end, Kingston College, led by their big defender, O'Neill Bryan, their number four, getting the better of Eugene Williams and his troops by a goal to nil. Driving forward into the air was Casey and Kevin Brown. Instinctive kind of finish. Back heel, ball was behind him. Brilliant attempt. Well blocked by Charlie Smith. Deshaun Byfield on the left hand side getting that ball into the area. Then Charlie Smith had to pit up the first half in and around that 18 yard area but just couldn't really create a lot of opportunities. This is the best of them. And Tony trying to get in almost, but Williams did well, strong enough. And it was cleared by the man of the match, Brian, in the right place at the right time in that first half. Then this scenario, the best for Kingston College in the first half. Miss kick, falling to Brown, should have done better, Brown. But Geary off the line in time. No to the second half, Kingston College into the area. Chance for Brown, can't find the back of the net. Went near post, probably should have gone to the far post where there was more space for him. And luckily, Charlie Smith got away. Then, Charlie Smith, their best attempt, this after the resumption, and hit it straight to the goalkeeper. Disappointing from a Charlie Smith perspective, Gale. Then, Casey, coming into the air, just look at that. Wow, a real blooper for Deontay Geary. Very unfortunate for the Charlie Smith goalkeeper. Slippery fingers, but Byfield was there, stayed alert, Byfield, and had the important touch to put it into the back of the net. KC 1-0 to the good. They had another really good opportunity. It fell to Byfield yet again. Asked similar questions of him, but this time couldn't keep it between the frame and a missed opportunity wide of the mark to Sean Byfield. That would have sealed it. In the end, KC didn't need it. Then nice 1-2 play down the left-hand side of the attack into the area. And look at this save coming from Gary. Lovely, two-handed, 
better than his previous attempt and forcing it out for a corner. The strike coming in from Kajay Fletcher. And he is still feeling it was Gary. Upset about his mistake. Casey getting in. And another chance. Yeah, wow. And Charlie Smith not adapting to the conditions very well. The wet surfaces after the resumption. And lots of opportunities. 1-0 KC, big result. Seven shots on target from 13 attempts for Charlie Smith, but couldn't get a goal today. Four on target from 15 attempts from KC, and the all-important one goal. There was one yellow card each, shown by Carvel Banton, the referee. Four corners for Charlie Smith, and they only had 45% of the possession. Majority of the possession for Kingston College, and they made the most of it. An important win to confirm their position at top of the table. 15 points from five games, 1-0 KC after 90 minutes. Let's hear from our man of the match who is with Janae, no more than O'Neill Bryan. Congratulations, O'Neill. You are the man of the match for today. Well, O'Neill, the last time I saw you was at the Heidel match. You got a red card, but now you're getting the man of the match award trophy. How does it feel? Well, it's a great feeling. You know that I, came, I sit out the game and come back after play a great game today again. As as, as our coach always tells us, we stay focused and go out there and do our best and we get the result. Well, defensively, you did play well on the pitch today, but considering the circumstances, the weather, the lightning, you guys were in the bus for a bit. How did that affect you today? Well, um, it not not negatively because when we go in the bus, we try to build our vibes. You know, say if we come out back out here, we're gonna just do what we have to do and get the three points. Okay, and talk about your team. You guys are on the top of the table, and you guys have another three points today. How does it feel? Well, it's a great feeling. You know, it's an advantage to go forward. So we have to just keep up the good work and do our best. Team. Well, congratulations, Daniel. Yeah. Thank you. And now. We have a chance to talk to the head coach of Kingston College, no other than Mr. Vassar Reynolds. Coach, we saw the weather conditions today and the stoppages in the game. How did, affect, how did that affect you and more so your boys? And how did you keep them motivated during that break? Um, at one time, we figured that that was it in terms of the game. But um, as soon as we got the news that there was a, there was a possibility, um, we asked the players to shift the mindset a, a little bit. Um, and what we came out here and do after, and did after the, the break, it, it, it indicated that we were pretty ready for the, for the restart of the game. Well, Coach, you did talk about the development of these boys and that it's a young squad. So you got the win today, but how are you going to keep this team from um, not being complacent for the rest of the season? No, we, we, we continue to... to, 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 to our rebuilding process, um, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Um, we take it as it's come. What, one thing that we're doing is treat each game as it comes. So it's a, we continue to develop and we continue to improve match after match. After match and that's, that's, that's the focus for the remainder of this round. Okay, Coach, you talk about treating the games as they come. So what does this game mean for you today? The it, it meant a lot. Um, it, mean, it meant that we would have um, you know, uh, accumulate uh, 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 some points at the end of the, the, the group. Um, which is what we wanted to do today, bearing in mind that the Idol and the Calabar match, which should have been played, somebody would, would, would drop some points. So we had that in mind, and, um, and hence we are pretty, pretty, pretty satisfied with, with the result today. Okay, so Coach, thank you. You're welcome. And now we welcome the... So let's take a look at uh, the latest results in Zone A. Camperdown with a 3-0 win over Penwood in recent times. And, of course, Kingston College with a 1-0 victory over Charles Smith here. And the Calabar Heidel game, it has been postponed. It was to have been the second game of the doubleheader here at Calabar High, but it has been postponed. So, Kingston College, they are 5-on-5, five five, 15 points they do have. Goal difference of 21 Calabar in second position on nine points. Heidel, they have dropped to third, but they have two games in hand on Kingston College. Charles Smith, they're in fourth position at the moment. So lots of work to do uh, for uh, those teams. Penwood in particular, they have, well, 
quite a lot to do as the whipping boys of the, the zone. But who knows, they may cause some trouble in the future. Let's take a look at what's happening in the Dakosta Cup. On Friday, we have another matchup. We're going to be live from the parish of Clarendon, in particular from Foga Road High. I think that's the first time that we're actually going to be going to Foga Road High. They'll be taking on the former champions at Garvey Maceo High. Match time, 3 o'clock Jamaica time, 4 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean. You can watch that on Sports Max 2 as well as on Scene TV. Yep, that's Friday afternoon. And of course, there's action in the SSFL Premiership on Sportsmax 2 on Saturday, 2.30 p.m., 3.30 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean. Trinity College against Malik Secondary. You don't want to miss that one as well on Sportsmax 2. That's a lot of schoolboy football action to look ahead to. We saw one game today and we saw action from the skies as well. Well, Kingston College looked up, picked up all three points over Charles Smith High. A 1-0 victory in the end. And they perch on top of what many consider to be the group of death. Not necessarily safe, but comfortable. On behalf of the hard-working production team, producer Phil Riley, director uh, Michael Edwards, I'm Donald Oliver. And we're signing out for the final time from Red Hills Road. Yo, Issa. Yo, Issa. I school boy football look this season. People am ready, you know. All right, then, pick up, man, in cup. Only for your shield, you make me link up. They watch the champions cup, then run this water cup, which team are in the championship this season. Yo, it's a one day for school, I got finished the league and beat now. Which you that got collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, it's a messy fans are roll out all boat, be a flag for a vehicle. Looking at the good, but load the supporters from school and community too. People, nothing understand, some are listening to the radio, but some are watching on TV too. Country and turn you now.